Hello, hello, hello. Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, everybody. This is Jeff from Fluent American checking in once more on a Saturday here at the Schwa Mill, where we help you craft your accent to help achieve a more natural pronunciation in American English. Okay, I'm going to play that once more. And guys, as you're listening to this, you can start to think, what are some things that stand out to you? Things that you think sound natural, things that you think sound could use a little bit of work. Why are you laughing at them? If you're not sure what was being said there, it was this file here. I already have some ideas, especially with regards to the pronoun at the end. But one more last time. Why are you laughing at him? Okay. So I think the big thing here, uh, some things I really like, I really like that fast D sound. That was for, for instance, that that Adam sound, Adam, Adam. So a lot of times when you have that T sound, that's there's a vowel before it, there's a vowel after it, and then you have that T in the middle. Very often it's going to take a fast D sound. So instead of at him, it becomes like Adam, Adam, and you can see or hear that at the end. Why are you laughing, Adam? Okay. So that Adam part. If you say at him, that's okay too, but maybe not the most natural sound that you're going to hear as often in North America. Just a heads up on that. The big thing that stands out to me here Why are you laughing at him? is I want you to really pay attention to pitches, especially for those last three words. Why are you laughing at him? Laughing at him. So what's happening here is we're pretty much just using the same the same pitch over and over. And this is very difficult in American English because you guys are probably already aware when you're speaking American English quickly. It uses a lot of reductions. It uses a lot of linking. So how do native speakers understand you when you're talking? How do they know what you're saying? Well, the big tool that we're going to use is pitch because higher pitches are going to be used for stress sounds, stress syllables. Lower pitches are going to be used for parts that are not stressed. And so part of the issue I would say here. Why are you laughing at him? And Ruben paying attention to that ending. So. Got the first part great. Instead of Aaron, it's going to be Adam, Adam. Um, but I could definitely see how you could interpret that as Aaron. I can hear that. So, But the big thing here is that for that last part, I think if we wanted this to get a little bit more of a natural rhythm. Why are you laughing, Adam? We need to decide what are we stressing. And my guess is that you probably want to stress laughing. Typically in American English, you are not going to stress the pronoun. Typically, what you're going to do is you are going to stress the verb. If you're pretty much, if you have a verb, then a pronoun, I mean, then a preposition followed by a pronoun. Usually, your pronoun preposition will not receive stress. Instead, you'll get that stress on your verb, like laughing at them. Why are you laughing at them? Why are you laughing at them? So, notice a higher pitch on laugh. And then after that, every single syllable is going to actually go down in pitch because nothing else is going to be stressed, like laughing at them. Why are you laughing at him? Why are you laughing at him? Okay. And the other thing I really like, just want to highlight for the him, notice that she's not really pronouncing that H. So it's not laughing at him. It's more laughing at him. So we're actually going to drop the H, going to slide right into the M sound at the end. And that way you can link things more. Very often when you have a pronoun that starts with an H, uh, so like he or his, and oftentimes as well, when you have uh, even like a TH, so for instance, um, like them or there, um, a lot of times those THs are going to get dropped in terms of linking. All right. Those are the first things that kind of stand out to me. I want to thank you for sending that audio file. Be sure to leave a timestamp in a moment. Okay. Hey, it's not the shopper's tool in the shed. Not that. This is not... <laughs> Comment <laughs> about people's intelligence and things. Okay. Hey, it's not the shopper's tool in the shed. Okay. Very quick thing, guys. Hi, everyone. It's Jennifer Tarl from Tarl Speech. The beginning of each of these words is exactly the same. Slight, slight, slight. Hard enough thinking about what to do while you're translating and thinking about what to say, and you're trying to think about what kind of an L is this. Hi. Hey, how are you? Happy I Saturday. Happy Saturday. Happy early Easter. Yeah, same to you. Your people are very anxious. Oh my gosh. Everyone's like, where's Jennifer? Where's Jennifer? Where's Jennifer? I was like, oh my gosh. 
Sorry, everyone. I was at an Easter egg hunt. We had important things to do this morning. So sorry, I'm a few minutes late. So the question then is, how many eggs did you find? Um, hundreds. So um, oh, it was a low angle. turnout at the Easter egg hunt. So my daughter got two entire baskets full of eggs, lots of candy. She's sorting it as we speak. Um, oh she God. has braces now. So there are certain things she oh, can't eat. No. Hurting those things out. Trust me, she's um, not hurting in the candy department. It has many. <laughs> no. Fortunately, candy can last a horrifyingly long time. <laughs> exactly, right? <laughs> um, Jennifer, thank you so much for joining us. Um, for those of you who do not know you from, from my channel, can you just give us a quick introduction about who you are? Yeah, um, again, my name is Jennifer Tarl, and I am a speech language pathologist by training. And for almost 18 years, um, I have been making pronunciation videos. Um, I've been sending those out in my newsletter before I was even on YouTube. Um, now I post everything on YouTube, Instagram, TikTok, all those good things. I have some products, and um, yeah. I just love helping people be clear communicators. That's kind of my jam. Got you, got you. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, you are located in Pennsylvania on the west. I side. am. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, being from Philadelphia, typically, typically we don't have the best relationship east and western Pennsylvania, but today we will make a very kind exception. We're going to bridge the divide. We We're will, going we will to be okay. <laughs> exactly. Are you a Steelers fan? I do have to ask. Well, of course. I mean, I was born in southwestern oh Pennsylvania. So you're no, sort of born no. into it. You, you, have, you love the sound of effect. You have to be. Um, so, yes, of course, I'm a Steelers fan. I should have worn my um, black and yellow. Oh, yeah, but you're, it is on. It is on. Yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> Um, Jennifer, I have a pronunciation file I was taking a look at, but we did have some questions. Uh, some of them directly sure. right to you, so I want to make sure we have time for them. Um, sure. To... Yeah, I Bridget. can't see them in the chat for some reason. Maybe only you can see them. I'm not quite sure. Interesting. Can you see on? Can you see yeah. this one on screen? Uh, yes. Okay. All right. Let's. I'll pull them up then. That's fine. Okay, so this one's saying, is two going to sound like the in the sentence, so to speak? So in so to speak, sound like the. What would you say for like so to speak versus so to speak? I, yeah, I, mean, I definitely hear that. I always say to my students, though, so, uh, I tend to overpronounce because I'm trying to be clear and I'm presenting. Right. So I would say mm -hmm. so to speak, but casually I would say soda, so to speak, mm -hmm. like I'm yeah. drinking a soda so to speak mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah i would i think that's also i think I'm, I'm really glad you brought that up about um context and like clarity so for instance i think a lot of times a lot of, it all depends on kind of like your language goals i feel like if you're someone that's right. um trying to prepare for like public speaking you know like giving a speech or things like that i think um right. those are times when those t sounds are really going to pop but otherwise if your goal is more conversational i would i think um you know, the, that, that fast D sound is, that flat T is going to be way more frequent. All right. And if I can jump in, um, I made a mistake. It's, I was in private chat. Now that I'm in comments, I can see. You can see everything, everything. now. Okay. I cool, can cool, see cool. everything. Yeah. It's a miracle. So I can see it's everything. Scary. We're all good. Yeah. The matrix has been awakened. Okay. Exactly. Uh, <laughs> what else have we got? Other things too. American food. I can't pronounce American English well. Okay, well, hopefully we can help you with that today. Um, we have another question as well quest, from quest, Lumberjack. Quest. Do these words sound the same? We have, where are the words that are sounding the same? Moron, he called it him an educated moron versus you can find, oh, moron versus moron. Yeah. <laughs> good question. <laughs> I wouldn't have put that together. Yeah, you're good. They, um, they sound the same. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. I think a real key thing too, just a quick note. So there's there's lots of syllables here. So like at least in terms of like the two syllables. So I would definitely say when you're doing like more on, just make sure that more has a slightly higher pitch than on in most situations. Like the on in general, you want to be a little bit lower, just because of stress. Um, other things here. But with that, I'm going to jump in. 
I mean, depending mm -hmm. on, because I've been working with a lot of students on focus words. And mm. so it depends on how you say more on, put more on the sandwich or put more on the sandwich. You know, it kind yeah. of would change that. So sometimes it might sound like more on and sometimes it might sound a little different. And I think that's a big thing I've been hearing a lot with my students lately. It's like, well, sometimes it sounds like this and sometimes it doesn't. And that's because pronunciation yeah. is kind of dynamic. Yeah. And, and the answer perfect. is yes. Yeah, right. it's like people asking questions like, do I do this or do I do this? And the answer is yes. <laughs> you kind of need to. Yeah. <laughs> um, I see Mahadman, I'm guessing Mahad, uh, saying, but make sure you're using your, your schwa sound, like your uh, try not to get too tense in your mm -hmm. mouth. Just a quick, like, mm -hmm. uh. Yeah. I think the big thing, you probably see this with your students too. A lot of people doing like bot, bot versus like but, but. Mm -hmm. um, and. Ooh. Yeah, those those unstressed um, vowels are such a challenge for so many of my students, mm -hmm. especially um, Spanish and Japanese speakers that just mm -hmm. making it short and relaxed and less than the others. That's um, that's a skill that a lot of people are working on. And mm -hmm. it, it does make a difference. It does make you sound it a does. little more natural. It does. Yeah. It's 100%. Um, I think, you know, a lot of those languages that you mentioned are so syllable time, especially Japanese. Like, oh my, like yeah. every single syllable is the same length. And American English just really doesn't like that for the rhythm. Yeah. Um, no, you like variation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, let's do maybe two more quick questions, and then we can bump into some pronunciation files again. Sure. Lumberjack, what's, what's, back what's, at what's, it. What's, uh, American English learners, do these words sound the same when we speak fast? Adam, Adam, at, Adam, Adam. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yep. <Yes. laughs> All of the above. Uh huh. That's usually now, right. that like, would get into, though, the at him. Sometimes I would say at him. Very mm -hmm. clearly, again, more public speaking as opposed to Adam, Context. which I would say conversationally. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Yeah, or even just if you need to like clarify the specific preps, it all depends on what word you're stressing, you know. Uh, okay. But is it possible for all these to link together and sound the same? Yep. Correct. I mean, that's mm -hmm. the that's the best part True of English, story. and also the scariest is that anything is almost possible, which is very liberating, but can also be very frustrating if you're looking for one thing. Exactly. Yeah. Take a so while you're pulling that up, I see like an actually interesting question here that I am always like fighting with my students about, not fighting, but you know what I mean, yeah. having discussions. Yeah. Um, yeah. What sequence do you recommend? Individual sounds, words, sentences, or depends on the subject? I actually think with anything that you're learning, you need to start small and think big. Speech is definitely a motor activity. And so a lot of times your brain knows what it wants to do, but your mouth just can't keep up. And so starting with just practicing sounds to make sure you can say the sound before you say it in a word is, is helpful. It's not like you're going to do that forever. That's usually a super quick phase, but everyone sort of starts there. And then you do say the sound um, in words. And there's a lot of people that can say every sound at the beginning of the word, but then they can't say the sounds at the end of words. So then mm -hmm. that's another strategy too, just like do what you can. And then you add on and then move up to sentences and reading. And I also think it's huge to, you know, if you are reading something to then take that next step and use that same language and same words that you just practiced while you're responding, while you're summarizing so that you can practice the words a little more conversationally, because mm -hmm. that's always the hardest part. Mm -hmm. 100%. Like that's, I tell students a lot, like if you're practicing shadowing, for instance, you don't have to shadow the same way every time you shadow. Like for instance, right. maybe... One time you shadow, hey, today I'm going to focus on pitches. Next yep. time you shadow, hey, I'm going to focus on linking just words together. Yep. Next time you shadow, hey, I'm going to focus on vowel sounds or consonant sounds. Um, there's not really a wrong thing here. One day you can focus on individual stuff. One day you can focus on sequences. The one thing I would say is that I think it's really helpful to don't just like learn a word at a time. Words don't appear by themselves. They appear with other words. Collocations are a real things like if you're learning for instance a verb you're practicing saying a verb maybe try to find like two or three nouns that go with that verb and then practice that that phrase a lot so that way you're kind of you're learning 
things that work in combination, you know, because when you talk, you're not just talking one word at a time, you're grouping things. Right. Exactly. And, and pick words that you use often uh, that you use at work because of that dosage idea, which you're going to practice those more because you use them all the time. So be intentional about your practice. He is not the sharpest tool in the shed. Thoughts on that. His, his not the sharpest tool in the shed. So of course the L jumps out to me because L always Mm. does. Because That's one of the things I work on probably the most with people, but that yeah. his, that sort of like breathy start to it. And it sounded more like his to me instead of he's. Mm, interesting. Let me hear that. He is not the sharpest tool in the shed. Yeah. Another thing to qualify to is that we are working with internet files through headphones. <laughs> it's like there's a lot of factors at play with like computer, or, uh, cell phone, microphones, you know? Um, but I, I, can, I can see what you're talking about. He is not the sharpest tool in the shed. So you think like maybe having like a sharper E sound after he yeah. may have I would say a longer, made. a longer E yeah. sound. Yeah. And then the sharpest yeah. sticks out to me too, because I'm hearing a little bit of a break there. Sharpest. Like I said, sharpest. Mm-hmm. But again. He is not the sharpest tool in the shed. Mm-hmm. Sharpest. Sharpest. Mm-hmm. You know, kind of linking He's everything together would be helpful. Mm-hmm. 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 Let's see this again. He's not the sharpest tool in the shed. I think um, it all depends on kind of your goals and the rhythm. One of the things here that I'm noticing, is, to me, is, it's not like a super long sentence, right? Um, so I'm hearing about three main stresses. He's not the, sh- not the sharpest tool in tool. the shed. Shed. He's not the sharpest tool in the shed. Th- those are kind of the three main stresses that I hear. And one of the things that I don't think that's wrong. I think you can do that with three thought groups. But the one of the things that, and I'd love to know if you if you feel like your students are doing this too. One of the things I see a lot with students is I see students using a lot of thought groups in their sentences, which is resulting in slightly choppier speech because you know every time you're throwing a thought group in there, you're adding an extra stress, and every time you're adding another stress you are kind of affecting your pitch a lot because, you know, you need to raise your pitch on those stress things. So what this can end up doing a lot of times is it can actually kind of, if you're not using enough pitches, it can almost lend that sense of sounding a little bit flat and robotic in your speech. I don't think this sounds robotic. There is some movement here. He is not the sharpest tool in the shed. But I do think we have some opportunities to expand the range of pitches that we're using. Um because to me, it's like, he is not the sharpest tool in the shed. He is not the sharpest tool in the shed versus he's not the sharpest tool in the shed. He's not the sharpest tool in the shed, like something like that. Like, I think we have some opportunities to expand, especially some of our lower pitches, just to add some greater contrast. And I think there's no pitchfall at the end. It's, it's so I, mm-hmm. I hear that a lot is that if I were to stress shed, he's not mm-hmm. the sharpest tool in the shed. I'd mm-hmm. still have my pitch. Mm-hmm. really fall at the at the end. Mm-hmm. I actually think, mm-hmm. I mean, I always go back to, this is 100% clear, right? Like that's mm-hmm. like a number one, mm-hmm. but if we're trying to make it better, um, definitely I would fall more at the end there. And I, the little tiny breaks kind of, I think, make it sound a little more choppy with the he is sharpest like i think there's these little teeny tiny breaks there Mm -hmm. that if they weren't there it would sound a lot smoother Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. he's not the sharpest tool in the shed i know a lot of you already are familiar with jennifer but um jennifer can you talk to us a little bit about things like your site what you got going on what are some of the things that people can turn to you for yeah this is so sweet of you to put this up i appreciate that um So I help people become just effective communicators. That's the way I like to think of it. And so I kind of have a three-pronged approach because I know not everyone can afford classes. So I have free YouTube classes. I have some courses on, I think you call it Udemy, Udemy. I don't even know how you say it. Um, That's a good, now I'm wondering. Okay. (laughs) Um, I don't even know. There's some classes there. They're not very expensive. Um, And then I do offer both um, 
ESL pronunciation courses, but also pronunciation for just Americans um, who have mm. been born and raised here, who speak English, um, that maybe need some help with their pronunciation and public speaking. I work mm. with a lot of women um, in business on cool. how to um, change their voice and pronunciation because a lot of times people try to change things to kind of fit in certain situations and mm. It makes you then sound inauthentic. So I help right. people kind of achieve their communication goals through voice, through pronunciation. Um, and then I also just, um, I've had books forever. You guys, I've been doing this for so long. I used to have DVDs. Um, oh, wow. And audio <laughs> files. Oh, yeah. I had it all. You had floppy um, files? And <laughs> I still have some if you want one. Um <laughs> So I um, now have all of my books. They're all digital. And as That's things right. evolve, I'm able to right. now offer my books with all of the audio embedded. So you can shadow there, there right along there it is. and um, practice. So recently, I've been getting into the habit of uh, eating healthier. Uh, for example, I'm cutting down on different types of fats like whole milk or butter. And I also try to exercise around three times a week. Um, I already feel better, and I guess if I stick with the plan, I will see even more benefits in the future. Okay, a long file here. Uh, let me. F oh, good, I did it again. I have to find it. Which one? I think it was this one. Okay, let me play it one more time. So recently, I've been getting into the habit of uh, eating healthier. Let's just kind of start with that first sentence. I'll play that one more time, Jennifer. So recently, I've been getting into the habit of uh, eating healthier. Okay, so anything that's kind of jumping out at you. Um, yeah, it took me a minute to kind of shift into, um, listening because everything is very similar. I would almost call it more mm -hmm. monotone. Um, as the file kind of gets going, I kind of picked up on mm -hmm. that and then I mm -hmm. could listen differently. Um, very breathy, very few pitch changes is what I'm mm -hmm. noticing most of all and more word for word Got you. Um, mm -hmm. instead of sort of linking things mm -hmm. together. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So How recently about you? I've been into the habit of uh, eating healthier. I, 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 I see everything you're talking about. I see there, I wouldn't say it sounds flat. So, cause you can hear, so he's got like what? Three parts in this first part. So recently I've been, so recently, so we have a first part. Getting into the habit of, of been getting into the habit. And then we have our last part. Of uh, eating healthier. Of eating healthier. Um, I do think we increase the range more. But I do hear kind of like three distinct parts, which is great. Because in general, what I tell students is that, you know, when you switch thought groups, I'm hearing three thought groups there. You do want to just kind of switch the pitch register just a little bit. And that's going to help add some contrast. And so I kind of I get that. So recently, I've been... So recently, been getting into the habit of i've been getting into the habit i do think I, I personally probably would have shifted that even lower so recently i've been getting into the habit so recently i've been getting into the habit um i think by raising that habit recently i've been getting into the habit of habit of versus habit of i do think habit was an opportunity to go just a little bit lower to increase our range of like lower pitches uh eating healthier um that wise i think the that l sound and healthier to me doesn't sound the most natural the habit of uh eating healthier 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 i feel like that placement is kind of jumping up on that l healthier versus like healthier i don't know if you're hearing that as well the habit of uh eating healthier eating healthier versus eating healthier because i personally probably would have dropped that a little bit more eating healthier mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. let me play that again see if there's other things that jump out to you in that first part so recently i've been getting into the habit of uh eating healthier I think that this also sounds, it sounds to me almost like this doesn't feel conversational to me. It feels like I'm talking to a microphone and I know I'm talking into a microphone. <laughs> like I know I'm making a recording. So this is like my, my recording voice. Like it doesn't sound to me like two people talking to each other. I don't know if you get that sense as well. Right. It sounds like he's reading, which is what I thought he was doing. Yeah, yeah, so maybe yeah. I'm coming at it yeah. differently. Yeah, yeah, 100%. 100%. So I'm like, so how do we, so then my question for you is, if you want this to sound conversational, and you're just trying to adjust this first line, what are your thoughts? 
So recently I've been getting into the habit of uh, eating healthier. I would say so. Recently, drag, okay. I've been getting so into the habit. Yeah. I would I would have bigger contrasts. That's what I do. So yeah, I'm yeah. speaking about what I do. Mm -hmm. I tend to really stretch words and I really have bigger pitch and loudness mm -hmm. differences. And also mm -hmm. I'm not as, as breathy. I got to be honest, the mm -hmm. breathiness, sometimes just as a listener, breathiness throws me off. Mm -hmm. um, it's almost like I'm trying to like lean in to listen. And it's not that you're not being loud enough. It just sounds a little bit um, less precise to me. Mm -hmm. I like what you did with the so recently part. One of the, the, I mean, the two biggest things you did to add contrast, held the word longer, mm -hmm. pauses, lengthen your word. So recently I've been. So recently I've been. So recently I've been. Lengthen. Getting into the I habit think, of. Yeah. yeah. Like I think right now, almost every single word is pronounced almost for the same speed. Mm -hmm. So recently I've been getting into the habit of uh, eating healthier. Everything's at the same pace. Every single thing at the same pace. And I know we've, we've talked a lot about contrast and we've talked a lot about pitch as a tool for contrast, but contrast doesn't just mean pitch. There's so many ways to add contrast. Pitch, but also speed. So yes. versus so. Um, volume. So recently, so recently... You know, these are all the techniques. You have so many tools with your voice, you know, so we, we can incorporate some more to, to increase um, the range of um, contrast we, we're using here. Other things before we move on to our next part? Um, I just want to reiterate, I, I agree with you. Pitch isn't the only thing. And even American no. speakers don't always really have huge pitch differences but they will stress in some way, shape, or form. And I think it's always important to remember the big three, loudness, pitch, and length. And I think a lot of times that length and the, um, the pitch are overlooked. I just had a really great comment on one of my videos. I have to go back and find it, where someone said he finally understood what we meant by syllable stress because he had to mm. shout at someone across the street. And so by shouting, he got the, oh, I said this part of the sentence and word louder. So that's mm -hmm. what you mean by saying stress something. So mm -hmm. whatever it is you do naturally, louder or longer or higher, try yeah. to kind of focus on that a little bit more. So it's mm -hmm. all about the, the difference. And don't, over, don't forget about the pauses. I'm big into pauses. Like you said, so recently... Mm -hmm. That's how I would sort of say more mm -hmm. conversational. Like I'd add longer mm -hmm. pauses and kind of slow that mm -hmm. whole sentence down. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's actually a very easy thing to measure for pauses is if you're shadowing, mm -hmm. again, I always recommend shadowing. Look how long the section is that you're shadowing. Maybe you're shadowing something that's three seconds long. Well, when you're shadowing, are you taking three seconds or are you doing two and a half seconds? Are you doing four seconds? Where are you losing time? Where are you buying time? Right. Uh, so that's a very easy way to kind of check yourself. Uh, I'm going to move to the next part of this sentence. Uh, for example, I'm cutting down on different types of fats like whole milk or butter. I'm play that again. Uh, eating healthier. Uh, for example, I'm cutting down on different types of fats like whole milk or butter. I want to talk really quick about lists and I'd love your thoughts on lists. Cause I think, Oh, let's talk like, about it. Cause I have strong feelings too. Let's go. <laughs> you know, I think it's, it's just one of those topics that's very easy to oversimplify because a lot of people are taught that, okay, when you have a list, rising intonation, rising intonation, falling intonation, that's your very stereotypical mm -hmm. pattern for lists, which is true. Mm -hmm. That can work. Um, it misses out on one of the like superpowers of lists when you're saying a list. Instead of using, for instance, like a falling intonation on your last item, how about we use like a rising intonation? Like to give an example here. So he's giving a list of um, things he's trying to cut out. Uh, for example, I'm cutting down on different types of fats like whole milk or butter. Whole milk or butter. One of the reasons that I think this sounds, again, it sounds like it's red. doesn't sound necessarily conversational. And I think a lot of times if you listen to people speaking conversationally, 
what you're actually going to find is that this list probably, in my opinion, probably would use rising intonation because just listen to the difference between these, like whole milk or butter, like whole milk or butter. Do you hear the difference there? By having that rising intonation on butter, it gives your listener the impression that the list is ongoing. There's a thousand other things I could say, whole milk, butter, oil, whatever, you know? So by actually ending a list on a rising intonation, especially in spoken conversation, it can give your listener the impression that there's, this is not exhaustive. There are more things I could say, and you get that, but I'm not going to name everything because I don't have time to do that. Whereas if you use that falling intonation, it kills all your energy, all your momentum's gone. I'm cutting down a whole, like different types of fats, like whole milk or butter. Done. And then, and then that's just it. Uh, what, what are your thoughts on lists? Tell me more about lists. I think lists, again, like you said, they're, they're overlooked. And I, I try to give people tips to make your life easier, right? Because there's so many things to think about. So I think in general, come up with what works for you for a list, right? Again, I know I sound like a broken record. I think it's about really pausing. Um, and then also, I think it's so easy to practice linking and sort of a focus word or highlighting something in your list. So again, you pick what works for you. If you want it to be louder, if you want it to yeah. be longer, or you want it to be higher, it just needs to be different. So I would say, for example, types of fat, whole milk, or butter. So I added pauses and I just mm -hmm. picked one word. Mm -hmm. I tried not to do too much with pitch. I know I automatically add a little more pitch, mm -hmm. but you know I made those words a little bit longer um, purposefully. So it's really just about making it different. So mm -hmm. think of how you can make that different. Mm -hmm. I like how you did that, like, like whole milk or butter. So there were even just, again, like a lot of times when you have lists, each unit in your list is almost like its own little thought group in a lot of cases. So mm -hmm. you no, know, it's like whole milk, butter. Like you're not saying whole milk, butter, because now it's the same pitch for everything. But when you switch items in your list, switching up that pitch, even just slightly whole milk, butter. So notice that whole milk is like up here Then I'm going to drop a little bit butter, whole milk, butter. Um, or you could do the opposite too, like whole milk, butter, like, you, you know, it kind of depends on context. I'm just I always say, think about if you're giving someone a list and there could be a different amount, how yeah. would you mm -hmm. help people understand that you're saying, I want you to go to the store and buy a stick of mm -hmm. butter, not a pound of butter. Mm -hmm. So what I did there, stick, I made mm -hmm. it longer. I actually went lower a little bit. Mm -hmm. I want a stick of butter, mm -hmm. not mm -hmm. a pound of mm -hmm. butter. So yeah. again, contrast. Yeah, yeah, and that bring, also brings up contrast. Speaking of contrast, contrastive stress and things like that too. Mm -hmm. um, and the names aren't important. I always want to say that to people. Yes, it's important to know the vocabulary when you're learning something, yes. but come up with like a mental way to do it. All the fancy words don't matter, right? We yeah. use these because we're teaching you, right? But like, if you call it something else, I don't care what you call it. Just figure out how it works for you, and then kind of yeah. That I think sometimes people get so focused on like, is this a dark L? Is this a light L? Is mm -hmm. this contrast? Mm -hmm. Is it this? It's like, I don't know. It sounded good, right? Like, just yeah. go for it. Mm -hmm. Hundred percent. Yeah, just just do the thing. Don't. Yeah, do the need, thing. <laughs> it doesn't need a name. As the um, kids say, let's do this thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Let's. I want to try to get through as many files as we can. So if we don't okay. listen to everyone's full files, um, my apologies. Um, How many do we have? How much to talk about? Uh. Let's just kind of see what happens. Let's okay, go. Keep <laughs> going, keep going. We'll, we'll keep it. We'll keep it organic. Hello, guys. Currently, I'm learning the language, but I'm a little lost because I don't know which skill should be given priority. Listener speaking. Do you want to get better at reading and writing, or do you want to get better at listening and speaking? What's your What's your focus? What do you What do you need language? What do you need English for? You know, right. if your goal is to just be more conversational, you know, reading and writing are going to help you, but listening and speaking are going to help you fast. One of the things that you also see. I mean, I can tell you firsthand i was um i was an italian major in school and what i found was that as my speaking got better my reading also got better even though i didn't spend as much time focusing on reading you know so skills do translate yeah i think that um like i think we've gotten better in the u.s with teaching languages in school i've had so many years of spanish i feel very uncomfortable 
speaking Sorry. it. I feel fairly comfortable reading it. I mean, there's still a lot of vocabulary that I don't know, no. but language is so dynamic. And if you look at the way that we just learn naturally, it's listening, speaking, reading, and mm -hmm. then writing. And so mm -hmm. I think oftentimes listening is really not focused on. Um, it's that, mm -hmm. you know, the it, it's easier to read no. because it's, it's, it's at your own, at your own pace. So I, I personally think that, that listening and speaking piece are huge because we mm -hmm. mostly use language to interact with other people. Um, okay. Let's take a look. Again, I felt lonely. Oh, snap. I tried to figure out what happened to me last night. Now I'm thinking about riding an Arabian horse, dark brown, along the beach. Oh my goodness, what a lovely dream. Okay, that was, all right. Wait, the very first thing that stands I, out is the pitches. <laughs> yeah, actually, here's what I think is interesting is that this person was going for some contrasts, but I think mm -hmm. it was difficult to hear because the pitch was very high throughout. And um, even though there were pitch changes, there was, because the pitch was so high, that pitch range could be so much smaller. Um, mm -hmm. And then I yeah. also think that everything was sort of from the head and it sounded a little mm -hmm. harsh voice-wise. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, th I think we have some opportunities for some lower pitches. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Again, I felt lonely. Yep. So, like, you know, I, I could have used some more pitches throughout this with kind of that pitch range of again or even slightly lower because uh, we did start down. Again, I felt lonely. One thing is just just a very minor thing. Lonely. I like the final e sound um, because I know mm -hmm. that's something that tends to be tricky for a lot of students. I'm sure. I'm sure you're seeing this. People reducing those final e's and like lonely, lonely versus like lonely, lonely. Still feel like I'm getting that e sound, which is great. I felt lonely. I tried to figure out what happened to me last night. Things are standing out to you there. I'm actually kind of thinking of a lot of things I love. There okay. are some good length differences. Mm -hmm. I, I'm hearing like a lot of nice little length differences. I like some mm -hmm. pauses there. But again, that I, I come back to what do we need to fix? It's definitely the pitch range. Mm -hmm. um, my tip is always if you do tend to have that higher pitch, try to start a little bit lower. Just mm -hmm. starting a little bit lower helps a lot. Because then you can um, expand your range there. What are you hearing? Mm -hmm. Yeah, again, I, I would definitely be open to some lower pitches. Um, mm -hmm. I want to hear, I want to hear, I'm going to play from I tried down to the beach park. So I want to hear what, what happens. Oh, lonely. I tried to figure out what happened to me last night. Now I'm thinking about riding an Arabian horse. I think uh, I wanted that now I'm thinking about part to either go lower or they tried to figure out like, I f like I felt lonely. I tried to figure out what, what happened to me last night. Now I'm thinking about like, I, I wanted some more kind of play with the, I tried it's like a contrast between the past versus the present. Like I tried doing this in the past and now I'm doing that. Like I, I wanted the pitches to kind of, reinforce that shift in time and i didn't quite feel i was getting it um but just for that one section with uh tried to figure out i tried to figure out what happened to me last night um the to me part sounded a little choppy figured out what happened to me last Hap like i think it's like happened to me like that i think that these a little heavy um night I to figure out what happened to me last night no because everything else is relatively kind of fluid so the times where it's not as fluid to me it kind of stands out even more which kind of throws me off yeah i i also think you can add some 
more contrast just at the syllable level, again, to make it a little bit different. I know a lot of my students struggle with that sort of sentence level, but if you kind of break it down, like thinking, um, I know that in English we tend to do that. I'm thinking about it, right? Mm -hmm. But this one almost sounded like think in, like it wasn't Mm -hmm. sort of um, different enough. So I would kind of stress thinking. And even Mm -hmm. if you said thinking, um, you know, one longer, one shorter, make sure you have a reduction in there. Because even yeah. though there are some length contrasts, everything tends to be pretty long here yeah. um, in yeah. terms of syllables. So kind of shrink some of those syllables. And that would, I think, also give us more contrast as mm-hmm. well. Mm-hmm. I want to hear that thinking part again. What happened to me last night? Now I'm thinking about... Think uh, about... Yeah, it's, it does kind of have that choppy. And about... Back it up slightly more. Now I'm thinking about riding an Arabian horse. Mm-hmm. So everything was yeah. Arabian horse. Uh, Arabian horse. Mm-hmm. Like you can make something shorter and mm-hmm. some longer. Everything's just kind of all the same length, even though you've got some mm-hmm. nice longer yeah, yeah. in there. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Riding an Arabian horse. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so some more opportunities to kind of drag things down. I think that's fair. Um, I'm going to play a little bit more of this, and then we'll try to move on to our next file. I think an Arabian horse. Dark brown along the beach. Um, so that kind of, it kind of threw me off, like, dark brown. And my expectation was things are going to drop. But instead, we go even higher. Like, dark brown along, like, it's like, oh, okay. Um, dark brown along the beach. Like... I personally expect that to drop. That threw me off. It's um, so like dark brown along the beach. I can play that part one more time. But riding an Arabian horse, dark brown along the beach. One thing I do like the the movement on beach again, like mm-hmm. B, like that again. So it's not just like beach. You know, it's like, mm-hmm. B, like just a little bit of movement makes it a little bit more dynamic. So I do appreciate that. I, I like that part. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I mean, I think overall, my biggest comment for this file would be, can we just incorporate some, some lower pitches, mm-hmm. please? <laughs> I hear this a lot, especially with um, women that I, I work with um, from certain 100%. areas of the world. Very high pitch compared to, um, I would say, American women. I yeah. think that you said it 100%. before, um, we tend to speak more from the diaphragm. And so we tend to skew a little bit lower in yeah. our pitch. Okay. Uh, let's check out this one. I've just returned from another city. The The city's uh, not very far from mine. Only like, you know, 30, 30 kilometers far. Okay. I'm going to face again. I've just returned from another city. The the city is uh, not very far from mine, only like, you know, 30, 30 kilometers far from here. I believe this is from Elchin. Elchin also asked you, Jennifer, if you could guess <laughs> where his accent is from. Play it one more time because I was only focusing uh, on... Um... Every, yeah, I totally understand. Yeah. Okay. I've just returned from another city. The, the city is uh, not very far from mine, only like, you know, 30, 30 kilometers far from here. Any... <laughs> <laughs> guess it's oh goodness um i would say maybe um again i'm gonna go for areas right i would think okay. like uh-huh. sort of like um you know like either like the arabic world or a okay. little more like if we're looking in the stan area of the world mm. um and like in the Russia area, so I'm I'm thinking mm-hmm. that area of the world. Yeah. Was I okay. right? Okay. Yeah, it's a Slavic language. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good job. We'll take Thank it. You. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. We'll take it. We'll take it. <laughs> um, I've just returned from another good? city. Yeah. Go ahead. I'll play. I'll play it one more time, and then we'll let you jump in. I've just returned from another city. the The city's uh, not very far from mine. Things standing out to you. Um, syllables are all very similar. 
Um, I do think that he's trying to use pitch a little bit, and I think mm-hmm. that we need a little bit more of a fall in there in mm. some places. Everything mm-hmm. tends to kind of stay up here. I think we need a little bit more falling, especially at the end of words. So mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I think a lot of people tend to do that. Is it, Even if mm-hmm. you're trying to have those pitch changes, don't forget to fall. And I think mm-hmm. that's what we're missing there is that fall. Mm-hmm. And we see that, for instance, on s- city. It's probably the, the word that stands out to me the most. I've just returned from another city. The The city is uh, not very far from mine. Only like, you know, 30, 30 kilometers far from here. Far from I would here even say mine. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's not very far from mine. Mm-hmm. It's far from mm-hmm. here. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I've just returned from another city. Like almost, we're almost getting into that reduced E sound, like city, city versus like city, city. Just mm-hmm. returned from another city. I've just returned from another city. The the city's uh... um, another thing too. So so we have the thought group ending on city cool. And um, one of the things this is a technique you don't have to always do this, but one of the ways that you can kind of join thought groups together is to hold on to your final sound just a little bit longer. I've just returned from another city. The the you can hear that pause. Um, so compare that like city, the, city the the city that versus like city that city that it's like city that so just kind of lengthening the final sound before a thought group and it's just what it does is just kind of smooth things out so then you're able to get from one section of your sentence to the next and it makes it sound a little bit more flowing versus when you just have that pause this gets into um i always tell my students in general vowels that end a word tend to be a little bit longer than the way other languages Mm -hmm. would Mm -hmm. say them. And Mm -hmm. the one that always gives a person away as a non-native speaker getting back to some of those questions is no. Mm -hmm. Um, And hi. No and Mm -hmm. hi are the two that like are always kind of a tell for Mm -hmm. me, even if other people think that person sounds very native, like no, no, no. Mm -hmm. In English, we tend to say no um, Mm -hmm. or hi instead of hi. Hi, hi, mm-hmm. no, no, mm-hmm. no. Yeah, so yeah. Those longer vowels at the end of a word, just working on that one thing can make you sound a lot more native and more fluent. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That and also gets back to again. Stretch the end of your word, I always say. Stretch the mm-hmm. end of that word. Yeah. And it also gets into that intonation stuff too. We're not just having a fall, yeah. but kind of adding a little bit of nuance, a little bit of waiver to mm-hmm. it. Um, I definitely agree. I've just returned from another city. The The city is uh, not very far from mine. Um, so I do like, there is, like you mentioned, there is shifting going on. I, like I just returned from another city. So like we're up here and then we say the city is not far from mine. So again, so there, there is shifting going on. It's great. It does not sound flat. Mm-hmm. Which is yeah. Great. Returned from another city. The, the city is uh, not. Again, I would just lengthen the E sound on city at the end in terms of vowel sounds. Not very far from mine. The stress pattern here to me feels irregular. We'll play yeah. it again, see if that... The city. The the city's uh, not very far from mine. The city's not very far from mine. Um the city's not very far from mine. Uh I probably wouldn't stress mine. I probably would stress far personally. The city's not very far. It's not very far from mine. Like it's not far from, not very far mine. from mine. Like, I would do it a little differently. I'd say the city's not very far from mine. Mm, let's see. Another city. The the city's uh, not very far from mine. Very far from mine. Like far from mine. I always think that that N is kind of throwing me off too a little bit. It sounds a Could little be. bit different than what I would expect. Um, it sounds just like a little. It's been surprising. Mm. City's uh, not very far from mine. Only like you know thirty thirty. The one on mine. City. It's like the, mine. The city's, uh, not very far from mine. Mine. And so it's mine. Like where it's kind of all kind of um, mm. smooth and together instead of just mine. Like even mm. though the I was longer, I'm trying uh, to I imitate it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. It's uh, not very far from mine. Only like, you know, 30. I wonder if that's, I wonder if the the placement's kind of rising on that. And I wonder if that's causing it. Um, yeah. Like 30, 30 kilometers far from here. Mine only like, you know, 30, 30 kilometers far from here. 30, 30. Like one's the, I, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I was going to say, I like the repetition of 30. You know, 30, 30 kilometers. 30, 30. Yeah. I think that's a very natural technique. A lot of people, 
are afraid to repeat, but native speakers do this all the mm-hmm. time. They repeat a word and then like it's, they say a word and then they repeat it. A lot of times they'll play with the pitch, like they'll lower it or they'll raise it. But um, I, I like that repetition there. Let's let's hear mm-hmm. it here again. 30, 30 kilometers far from here. Um, far from here. To me, it's, to hear, I like the sound. 30 kilometers far from here. I like that R sound. I think the R sound is really good. Um, yeah. It sounds I like the pitch on that here. I thought really? it was good. It here? sounds overstressed. It sounds overstressed to me. Hang on. 30, 30 no, I like the pitch on that one, actually. I would say okay. something like that. It's not far from here. Mm-hmm. But I don't... Is that how he's saying it, 30, though? Hang 30 on. kilometers far from here. Far from here? here? Like far from here? I wonder if it's... I want to hear from in contrast with here. Kilometers far from here? From here? Like from here? From here? Like the, 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 to me, that feels a little sharp on the rise. But... To each his own. The from could be different. <laughs> I was that here. I liked it because I think there was some nuance mm-hmm. in the here. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So like you know, 30, 30 kilometers far from here. Far from here. Here. Like far from here. Because mm-hmm. mm-hmm. um, it's kind of poppy. Um, I'm gonna pause this audio from. I'm gonna play everything to that point again to see if there's any final thoughts uh, that you mm-hmm. have on this file. I've just returned from another city. The the city is uh, not very far from mine. Only like, you know, 30, 30 kilometers far from here. Like a fast descent on kilometers. Um, if we're getting into thing, voice yeah. again, I feel like that's a theme okay. from today. Um, it sounds like all the words are starting from your mouth instead of starting from your, your chest. It almost feels like you're mm. punching the words a little bit. Realistic thinking. Thanks for the question. Are there more than one way of saying the, another TH words depending on where it is? Um, oh, that darn TH. Yeah. Uh, what are your thoughts? Let's go. Let's go, TH. Come on. What you got? Okay. I mean, ultimately, I think that, like, we talk about TH so much. And I think that, yes, I say my THs, but this is one of the sounds that's tolerated the most. And I think American English is variations on the TH. Um, unless you're saying a word that has a minimal pair. And what I mean by that, like, worse and worth you're going to be saying a different word completely and that might change the meaning. But, you know, I think that um, even I in just conversational speech don't really fully pronounce my TH like I'm doing it right now because I'm in a class taking a class. You know, and if it's, if it's linked, it's going to sound a little different. If it's, um, so I, I mean, I guess my, my big takeaway is don't, get yourself too worked up over the TH. I think focus on a lot of other things first and then focus on those words that you have to say that have Mm -hmm. that TH in them that you need. And Mm -hmm. that's going to, I think, help a lot because then that anxiety, I feel like there's so much anxiety related to TH that if you get rid of the anxiety, then everything kind of smooths itself out. And I know that's like a weird answer, but it's true. Is that Mm -hmm. there's people so worried about it. Yeah, and it has perfect. a reputation. Exactly. Yeah. So what do you yeah. think? What's your two cents? Yeah, I think people go hard on TH when they really don't need to. I think, in all honesty, it disappears a lot. Um, yeah. For instance, one thing we talk about, when you have like an N sound that comes before a TH, a lot of times the TH will disappear. Like instead of saying like, and then, which is just physically hard to say, and then. You know, one of the things, again, American English is really about breath. I'm trying to keep breath going from one sound to the next. That's my job as a speaker in general. TH oftentimes is getting in the way. So what often happens is that TH is going to get reduced. It's going to get weakened. Sometimes it might even disappear. So like, for instance, in the case of and then, what you're going to hear a lot of native speakers do is they're not going to say and then. They're going to say and then, and then. They're just repeating that N sound. And then, and then, and then. Mm-hmm. And you'll see that a lot with other N TH sounds. And that will happen in other situations too. So the TH really isn't the most important part. It's really more about the vowels around the TH that you want to really try to get right. In my opinion. Correct. Yeah. Um, one last question, then we'll keep going. Pablo asks question. Us, question. caught with a long vowel or a short vowel. A quick oh, note with like I, I hate the name long vowel. They really need to change the name. Because a lot of people they hear long vowel and they're like, okay, so long vowel, I'll make it longer or short vowel, make it really short. It's the same length, guys. Like vowels are the same length. Yeah. I use long short. and short because that's how we teach right. reading. In the U.S., mm-hmm. and I have a lot of students who mm-hmm. are parents, and so it really lends itself. 
to that. Um, and then also, you know, even on Google with Google Translate, a lot of times they'll sort mm-hmm. of use the the short, long vowel spelling mm-hmm. um, patterns. Mm-hmm. I actually say caught, I would say with the medium vowel mm-hmm. <laughs> to like totally mm-hmm. change up that question. And I think it does sound, I do think that a lot of my students perceive vowels as shorter and longer, even though they are mm-hmm. technically all the same length. Mm-hmm. And I think it gets more into tension. So it gets back to, I don't care I what do. you call mm-hmm. it as long Mm -hmm. as you hear it. So Mm -hmm. a lot of my students hear short, medium, and long vowels, and they Mm -hmm. say this is medium because we open our mouth, caught. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, anyway, I can't really answer that question. You are right. The short and long is is hard, but I do use it as a teaching tool. Got you, got you. Um, In terms of how I personally would say caught, I would say caught, I use an aw sound. My wife is from the Midwest. There's that great Midwestern vowel shift going on. She's using like caught. So you will hear people use an ah or an ah. Um, what I will say is that um, if you're trying to decide, do I say caught? Do I say caught? Which do I use? Um, in a lot of ways, it doesn't really matter because people, there, I'll put it this way. There's no words in English where if you use an ah sound versus an ah sound, people are going to be confused. And honestly, Correct. people aren't even really going to notice, in all honesty, no. unless you get. I always just really say, get. open your mouth. Don't say cut. Yeah. As long as you don't say cut, you're good. <laughs> Just don't yeah. say cut. <laughs> I, think, I think that's really fair. Um, okay, I want to get to some more files. Uh, give me a second. Let's pop this back up. If you were to rate these three, sorry, these four of flavors. Um, if you were to rate these three, sorry, these four of flavors. I'm going to be honest. I saw the text. Now I'm very biased. But I feel like if someone walked up to me on the street and said that right away... I might have to ask them to repeat themselves. I didn't get it, to be honest. Play it one more time. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. If you're a rate these three, sorry, these. L- let's if just, you're a registry like... flavors, that's what I got. Got you. If you're a rate these three. When I tell you what it is, you're going to be like, oh, now I hear it. But I want to see. Play it one more time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you're a rate these three. So here is the actual text. Let's talk about this part. And even other people saying, I uh, said, if you raid this tree, oh my gosh, we get all kinds of things. Oh no. And then we're getting all kinds of things. YouTube user, oh my gosh. No, it's rates, rates. <laughs> if you were to rate these three, um, if you were to rate, so how would we help this sentence not be so ambiguous? If you were to rate these three. If you, you were to, I think it's a little too slurry. You need some contrast. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And again, sure. do you want to go louder, longer, or pitched? But you need something. If you were to rate these, if you if you were to rate if you are because what's happening? So those first three words, I think, are the I in my opinion, I think that's where the problem is starting. Mm-hmm. Like you are you are you are because I'm just looking at the chat and people are hearing all kinds of things that <laughs> you probably don't <laughs> want your listener interpreting. <laughs> If you're a rate, you are, you are, so if I don't think if is the problem, so I think it's the you were. If you're a rate, because I can hear the F. If you're a rate, if you're, if you're, if you're, if you're, if you're, if you're, if you were, I think we need a little bit more you, you sound on you. Like if you were, if you were to, if you were, if you're, if you're, because I feel like maybe our lips stayed a little too straight. If you're, if you're, versus if you were, if you were, I do feel like that yeah in there is is throwing me. If mm. you were, I would do you were. So I think linking those two together you. makes that a lot sure. longer. You uh, were well, because you have those like almost two W's there. You were. Mm-hmm. If mm-hmm. you Let's... were to rate these three, mm-hmm. if you were to rate, you were yeah. I mean the W just got dropped. There's just mm-hmm. no W. If you were, ra- if you were, if you were, versus if you were, if you were, yeah, I think just mm-hmm. adding as difficult as it is, um, just based on <laughs> what I'm saying from the chat and things like that, for people to get what was said here, I don't think it would actually take much for this to become understandable. I think, I think mm-hmm. that, again, just adding a very slight W sound would have been perfect, and I don't think we would have had an issue for that part. 
if you were because if you were because what's happening is your first three words are just all blending together versus like if you were if you were so just a very quick was sound um again and also uh, the, a little bit on that you um other questions on that part I just want to comment that for a lot of my students who are struggling just kind of with that general clarity, especially at like on a certain sentence or a certain word, mm -hmm. a lot of times if I just say, okay, focus on moving your mouth more when you say it this time, that's such an easy fix. Again, if you're looking for something easy and some of these things are a little too complex for you, if all else fails, try that. And a lot of times that really helps. And I think if he just would have moved his mouth a little bit more might have gotten there it might not have been perfect but i think there would have been um it would have been clearer a little bit more clarity yeah if you were to rate these three if you were to rate these three if you were to rate these three like if you were to rate these if you were to if rate you just these made three. your vowel longer rate yeah, and also, yeah. and long, mm -hmm. with the pitch as well mm -hmm. so this yeah, yeah. like when i listen to it more it either sounds like red or red mm -hmm. or red it's like, a middle like i'm not like hearing like that a, a at all mm -hmm. yeah yeah, so also maybe watching out for some minimal pairs there. So like um, even just based on other people's comments too, other people hearing some similar things. So like maybe just comparing, I'm typing in some minimal pairs here. Um, and I hear this this street to me too. Like when, when people put that in the chat, also keep in mind our brain puts in there words that we kind of know. And so yeah. like some things that people are hearing, let's say you just read an article about something, that word could be in mm -hmm. your head and you're thinking about mm -hmm. that, you know, certain yeah. words that yeah. can kind of cloud your judgment. I just kept hearing registry. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So it's kind of washing out for these minimal pairs here. It's like a, uh, yeah. a red raid, a, uh, a west waste, a, uh, a met mate. So it's washing out for mm -hmm. those. Um, other people hearing the streets, the streets. I'm trying to say, can I get the streets? I want to hear that. Hang on. If you were to read these streets, sorry. These. I get that. These streets. You know? <laughs> I didn't hear it originally, but now that like people have said that, like I could see. Yeah. If you were to read these streets. <laughs> One other question and then we'll jump to audio. Can the uh, A for as be a schwa? Mm -hmm. Yes. Like as far as, yeah, that's a super common reduction. Like as far as, like as far as yeah. and things like that. Um. Um, by way, a schwa or the schwa? Do you use a or the with schwa? Um, you can use an a. Uh. I never heard a rule that you have to use a definite article. Have you? <laughs> like, I would say, like, you need a schwa, like a schwa sound, or you need a schwa. You can, you can use an indefinite. Yeah. I don't, I've never, <laughs> okay. You can use an indefinite article. Like use a use a schwa. I, I guess I see both. I've never thought about that. That's an interesting. Yeah, I haven't either. Yeah. It's called, catching me off guard. I'm nervous, but yeah. <laughs> I also um, want to comment quickly on the schwa. Please. This I get the question so often: Is a schwa a it or f? Americans say it differently, yeah. and so I think <laughs> just yes. going for un for like short, quick, like relaxed vowel mm. is all that you need to think about. Yeah. yeah. I think I'm actually, I have to run to a class. So I think I'm actually going to have to pause this here. For those of you who have sent uh, audio files, my apologies. Um, we appreciate it. Got overwhelmed with like questions and things like that. Um, I has makes to know all the words that end L Y naturally, actually, really. How would you say these words, Jennifer? A naturally, actually, really. Naturally, actually, really. I do mm -hmm. say so an L. Are, yeah. Here's a slightly firmer. I go, I lean into the dark L. <laughs> I go hard into it. Naturally, okay. actually, really. I know that we, you were, I think, in one of my live classes and you, you brought this I up. Your, yeah, I saw your really use yeah, yeah. a dark yeah. L. And so I overcorrect and use a very light L most of the mm -hmm. time on purpose because dark L sometimes make you difficult to understand. And, you know, I'm all mm -hmm. about clear. And yeah. so I really just used kind of that light L as much yeah. as possible. Yeah. I'm all about linking and reductions. I'm kind of the opposite of clear. <laughs> so I, if you want to join these together, um, what you're going to get is naturally, actually, really. But what I will say, a dark L is not a silent L, just a note. No. It's an no. L sound. It's not just taking off the L. Okay. So right. just, just a note on that. Um, other real quick questions. Um, pull, pull, pull. Pull, pull, pull. How would you say these, Jennifer? I say them differently. I say pool, pool, pool. Okay. It's different, but it's not like that yeah. different. No. 
It sounded like you. How do you say the first one? Pull. Pull. Like pull it. Pull. 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 Well, again, with the L. I mean, the L's again. Yeah. Creeping in. It all depends. How hard do you want to go into your dark L? How much do you want to embrace? Right. How much do you want to do it? Last question here. What do you, what do you got? Hmm? Oh, what you got? What you got? Like the slow. Both. I hear both. Um, Okay. I think I would say, what do you have? But I think if I'm no. trying to be like hip, because again, I work with kids, I'd say sometimes <laughs> like, what you got for me today or something like that. You know, the kids are always telling me I say things like no. an old lady. Um, so again, language changes. Oh, These great. are teenagers. That's what they yeah. say. I'm like, oh yeah. my goodness. But you know, yeah, yeah. everybody I'm has an opinion. I definitely use what, <laughs> again, context, code switching, professional settings and things like that. You know, if right. you're leading... It depends on context too, because even in those settings, it might be okay. But um, right. But um, so is it okay? It can be. Yeah. <laughs> uh, other, everyone, guys, you. For, I have to run. <laughs> I'm sorry, okay. guys. Okay. Hey, this is so much questions. fun. Thank you for having me. <laughs> yes, guys, be sure to check out Tarl. You can check out her channel and things like that for Tarl speech. Um, she has all kinds of services, Udemy courses. She's fancy like that. <laughs> got other things for you um jennifer it has been a pleasure thank you so much for joining us thank today. you so much for having me um and take care and everyone cool. have a great weekend hey take care everyone thank you so much for your time we'll see take you care. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye.